Hello, today we are looking at something called specific latent heat. And before we can understand this, we're going to just revisit our change of state graph again very quickly. Here at the bottom here, we've got some ice. And when ice is heated, it will change to water. And when it's heated further, it will change to steam. And the way we get ice to change to water is we melt it. And that's called melting. And changing to steam is boiling. Now, both of these, melting and boiling, they both represent what's called a change of state. Okay, so changing from solid to liquid or liquid to gas, we call that a change of state. Our graph shows what's happening at the different changes of state. So at the top here, that flat line there, that's changing from liquid to gas, and the bottom one is changing from ice to ice to sorry, from solid to liquid. Now, what's going on at that flat part of the curve? Well, we can see that the energy that's being transferred to the liquid, to the substance, is changing state but it's not changing the temperature so the energy supplied there changes the state but it doesn't change the temperature that amount of energy that's needed to do that to change the state happens twice on this graph but that amount of energy has a name and that energy is called the energy supplied there is called the latent heat so the energy supply to change state, but not the temperature, is called latent heat. But we don't want to know just latent heat. We want to know specific latent heat. So what's the difference? Well, specific latent heat refers to exactly one kilogram of a substance. So when we have one kilogram of a substance, and we're changing the state of that, the energy required to change that one kilogram of substance uh, to a different state is called the specific latent heat. And that's quite an important uh, definition. However, we do have a kind of sub-definition for this as well. We need to understand the two different points on the graph. So here, when we're changing from solid to liquid, when we go from solid to liquid, we have a slightly different name. It's still the specific latent heat, but we call it the specific latent heat of fusion. So going from solid to liquid is specific latent heat of fusion. And when we go from liquid to gas, on the top part of the graph there, or liquid to vapor, that has a different name. That's called the specific latent heat of vaporization. Specific latent heat of vaporization. Okay, so those are two quite important definitions. I suppose three in, in total, but you do need to know the difference of those between those, and you should be able to know and remember those and say what they mean. Okay, so that's our graph there. Might need to pause over it and just have a look at it again, but we can write down our definition of specific latent heat it's the amount of energy needed to change the state of one kilogram of a substance with no change in temperature with no change in temperature this is the specific latent heat if this was asking asked in an exam this could very possibly be worth two marks because there's two parts of the answer there change in state no change in temperature we also need to be able to use an equation so here's our equation but luckily we need to be able to use it but not remember it if we need it, it will be given on the equation sheet that's supplied with every paper. So we have the energy change or the energy for a change of state that's measured in joules. Energy is always measured in joules, capital J. Mass is measured in kilograms. And specific latent heat, if you're thinking ahead slightly, is measured in joules per kilogram. There we go, joules per kilogram. The abbreviations there for once are quite logical so that's just the same equation but with the letters instead of the whole words okay now we can use this to uh, do an example so here we have the equation at the top which is going to be given to us and the example here says stearic acid is a substance that melts and freezes at 55.6 degrees centigrade we want to calculate the energy transfer to the surroundings as 0.5 kg of stearic acid changes state from liquid to solid so we're calculating energy transfer that's e and we have over here the mass so that's m and we're also given the specific latent heat of fusion of stearic acid so that's our l so this is just a simple case of putting the numbers into the equation so it's e equals m times l which is 0 0.50 which is our mass times 199,000 and that gives us an answer of 79,600 joules. 
I suppose that could be abbreviated to 79.6 kilojoules, but that's our answer there. Second question here, slightly different. It says, while a kettle boils, 0.018 kilograms of water changes to steam. We want to know the amount of, oh, we're given the amount of energy transferred. We need to know the specific latent heat of vaporization or calculate the specific latent heat of vaporization. Something like this might be worth four marks only because we've got to write our answer to two significant figures and we've got to remember the units. So that's probably worth a higher level of marks. We've got our mass, which is given there. We've got the amount of energy transferred, which is there. And we need to calculate the specific latent heat of vaporization of the water, which is there in red. First thing is that the energy is given in kilojoules, so we should convert that to joules, because that's the unit for our, our equation. And then we can use our equation. And if we substitute in the numbers, we've got 41,000 equals 0 0.018 times L. We can rearrange the equation by dividing both sides by 0 0.018. If that's a little bit confusing, we can use our little hack over here. We can do our formula triangle or equation triangle there, and that would look like this. So if you want to make a note of that, you can. We're working out L, so it's E divided by M, which we've shown in our calculation there. Once we put that into our calculator, we get an answer of 2277. 777.78 there's our answer but it is asking us to give the answer to two significant figures so how do we do that well these are our first two figures which are our important figures there the next one afterwards is five or above so we round up so it would be two three zero 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 two point three million and our units as the question has asked us to give we should remember this is joules per kilogram. So there we have it. There's our answer for this question here. So quite a lot we've gone through. We've talked about what we mean by specific latent heat, a couple of definitions within that definition, and we've looked at the equation and done a couple of examples. So you may need to go over this one or two more times, but other than that, that's the end of this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.